Hi, very good morning. How are you doing? After Sammy's uh, candid conversation here of the happiness quotient, we take who over. Um, I'm saying who over because Richie Spice is in the building here at Raw Media Services. So, you know, the reggae bug has got all of us in a team. You have to understand this thing, overstanding thing. And QTV is a and the Lele Apple. And CJ is reggae at heart. CJ knows more about the <laughs> Wow, really? You'd be surprised. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> All right. My lawyers are watching. <laughs> you don't know what to say. You don't know what to say. You don't see me. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Make sure if you haven't got your ticket by there for Richie Spice, then I'll go Hassan Sasa and get your ticket up with Haraka San or Pata Tikitiako, Ukujo Mwone Saturday, all right, at the KICC. It's called Aital Tenasana. All right, right about now, uh, we have a very interesting conversation here. I want to start, I'm trying to look for a tweet here that will kind of kickstart us. Um, yes. yes, so somebody says here, uh, this is Chili Lemon on, 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 on Twitter says Gen Z, and that's who we're talking about today, not wanting to be exposed to mildly uncomfortable situations is simply a lack of mental resilience and nothing more. Protecting my mental health, they say, is abused and abused phrase lately. Young folk, he, he posits, uh, cannot handle the slightest adversities. He goes on to say, I understand the need to be happy, but part of life is criticism, waking up at 3 a.m., Working weekends or 16-hour shifts, sometimes unfair things will happen to you. Sometimes you'll have to do things that are uncomfortable. Sacrifice, folks. Sacrifice. And then Dr. Njoki Ngumi answered and says, I worry about blanket assumptions that Gen Z don't know how to suffer just because they won't suffer the same things in the same ways that others did. Stoicism is not a winning strategy. People will watch you die and praise you for doing it quietly. So two schools of thought there uh, that we want to uh, explore. Uh, I already introduced uh, QT. Wagwanogwan, Ukosalama, Niko Fiti. You feel me, Yazime? Yeah, man. I'm going to be a lot to know. Lot to know. Lot to know. What team? Cindy, oh. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> Jamaican. Jamaican and everything. Upon you good? Years. Yeah, Niko. I see you good, man. Yeah, man. Niko, I tell everything good. Apo sa wakabisa. Mike. Yes, sir. How are you doing? Good. Kabisa. I haven't seen you guys this year. Hey. Hi. Happy no. New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> you know we see each other on social media. Yes, 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 yes. We're like, ah, you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. CJ, how are you? Good, good, good. Yeah. Good to see you. Good to see yeah. you too. Right. So, well, I guess, CJ, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Very right? well, thank you. Very good. I like the color coordination. Alpha. There's a bit of blue there. There's blue there, yeah. white there, white. Blue is my black, spirit black. color. Oh, yeah? yeah. Wow. Right. What does it uh, I think mean? my soul is blue. Okay. Yeah. What team do you support? <laughs> I don't watch. Oh, very good. Um, Man City because, would have yeah, done good for Man City. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I've read the two uh, sets of uh, tweets, the argument and the counter argument. Uh, what do you think, CJ? Which side? Do Why did you have to start with me? <laughs> <laughs> All right. We do ladies first. Well, uh, well, you know, everything depends on how you look at it mm -hmm. and who looks at it. Mm -hmm. Um, and no matter how much uh, the person who talked about, you know, we can't have the blanket thing, there's a reason why people will always go into research and statistics because you want to know what is the prevalent trend. Right. Uh, so it will never cover everybody. By the time we say, uh, for example, the state of the economy is not good, not everybody exper experiencing that, but it is the general thing. So in a sense, you cannot avoid general trends because they show us where most of the people are. So when it comes to the Gen Z, it is a general thing, like they're, uh, they're parenting their parents today. They, uh, they have employed their bosses. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there is such a sense. Uh, you have conversations with different people in different spaces and it cannot be a coincidence. I mean, um, people don't just wake up and say, we're gonna hate on this Gen Z because most of them are, for my generation, our kids. So there's no way we'll just wake up and hate on them. We raise children who are that age. We relate with them, we employ them, we lead them, we work with them. But then you see certain trends as well, which raise concern that if something does not change, they may not go too far in life and uh, they are not really prepared for what life is. I think it started with how we have parented them as well. 
that there was a lot of privilege offered. We swung the pendulum from what we didn't have and what we wanted them to have. Like we felt our parents did not give us certain things. We suffered, we lived a certain kind of a life and we said, I don't want to live that kind of life. I don't want my child to go through that. Then we went to the other side. The intention was good, but then we did not really count the cost mm -hmm. of what that would do. Mm -hmm. So we took away the foundations that made us who we are. And we took away, I normally love to say the seed and give them the harvest. So they got up and they had everything at their disposal. Um, they would make choices. We would say, you know, they need to be hard. Um, so they didn't know how to handle rejection. They did not know how to handle adversity. They did not know how to handle uh, criticism as well. They felt that everybody would treat them in the way that they would be treated at home, mm -hmm. where somebody will listen to you and be patient. But when you go out there, not everybody was raised in your house right. or in your home. Um, life out there is, can get very adverse. And so, they are showing out there who we made them become at home. Then now we begin to complain because we thought at some point they'll just grow up and become who they needed to be. Mm. But this is what we have taught them for 15, 16, 17, 20, 21 years. Now when they go out there, they feel that the world is unfair. Mm. They feel everybody's unfair. Uh, this is not how my father or my mother talks to me, so you can't talk to me like that in their office, you know, because there's now what they have been used to. Um, so I feel to a great degree, we have helped create that. We have been enablers of that. Um, and last week I said, in parenting, you need to prepare your children to live without you because you will not be uh, a very present or eternally present uh, person in their lives. Anything could happen. And uh, they need to know how to make decisions without you, how to face adversity, how to deal with criticism, rejection. You will get more no's in life than yeses. They need to be prepared for that. And sometimes love is denying somebody privilege so that you prepare them for whatever they would face in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So if it looks like we we created like the, the song say oh, i created a monster uh, so do you think that now that this looks like it's a creation like you can trace it back um do you what do you, first of all what are your initial thoughts before we say how you can trace it back and then mm -hmm. therefore what we can do your initial thoughts of just what you have observed because i'm sure uh, well in different places <laughs> I don't want to say here, but in different places, <laughs> you have seen Gen Z's at work, at the workplace. What are some of the things you hear about, about them? I think uh, Gen Z is uh, entitled, but then really it goes back to Mtoto Mleavio and Divya Kuavio. Last week we talked about the African mom, and we saw that she's an endangered species. We'd say that, like the parents, we are the ones that are raising Gen Z's. As much as we want to bash them and say everything about Gen Z, but at the end of the day, we are the ones raising the Gen Z, you see? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, we list, you're raising children, as CJ is raising children, Mike is raising children, you know, at the end of the day. So this comes back to parents. It's a 50-50 thing. But I think Gen Z doesn't want to be held accountable. Mm. They don't want to be responsible for anything, you see. At the end of the day, the Gen Z just wants easy come. And they don't know that easy come, easy goes. They want to make money very fast. Yeah. But they don't want to, to trust the process. You know, there's trusting the, uh, trusting the process. I'm not saying they should suffer, because they're saying, oh, why should I have to suffer because you guys suffered? Now I have to go through the same process that you guys went through. It's not really about that. It's about, uh, last week we talked about a Gen Z not going to work because their phone went off. Willis, in this age and era, I mean, seriously, like right now, I would not show up to work because my phone went off and I don't have cash to go to work. <laughs> Who does that? Utakuja hapa ku explain ya bazenga umambe, by the way, you know. Simu liko off. So, you ni responsibility right. na accountability. Awataki kuku accountable for their actions. Ea yeah, nataka tuwa mke, aku employed, and a job satano. Who goes to work at 11, man? Like, but I, I understand things have changed. There are people who go to, uh, to work at 11, you know, but, and it doesn't affect them in any way. But what I can say is that times are changing. I know that times are changing, and we need to go with those times, but we are the ones that 
have, we are the enablers, as CJ has said. We are enabling this uh, Gen Z. If I cannot uh, be able to punish my niece or my nephew or my neighbor's uh, son or daughter, because I know the repercussions, the parent will come, the neighbor will come, and now it will be a fight between the parents because I cannot simply discipline that child. The child comes to my house, they misbehave, but I cannot touch them. Why? Because the parent now will come and start fighting with me. You see, those are the uh, kind of children that we are raising. Even in schools right now, a child will be entitled because they know, oh, my dad is going to protect me. You don't know my dad. Do you know who my dad is? That's <laughs> what they tell you. Do you know who my, uh, my mom is? You know? Do you know who my uncle is? But we are the ones who are doing that because you will go to school, fight with a teacher to protect your child. But why are we doing that? Why is the kid going to school then. You need to let the uh, teachers be responsible for that part, you know. Let the teachers do their part. Let the society, let's raise these kids as a society because we'll end up bashing these kids but we are also responsible. So I feel like it's a 50-50 kind of thing as much as they don't want to accept re uh, responsibility and all that but we are the enablers. Sadly, we are the enablers really on this one. We have to take, lazima to take responsibility up to say, you see, when we were growing up, I'd say that I didn't have those privileges, you know, like uh, pocket money. It's called, I don't know what it's called, but it's allowance. not called allowance. You know, we give them those allowances. We survived without the allowance. You were given like 500 bob to survive a whole term. Nowadays, they're given like, I don't know, 10 Gs to survive a whole term. Seriously, <laughs> Willis? 10, 20, 30, 10, 20 Gs, like, oh, I have, a, I have an iPhone 14 Pro Max. That's yeah, a 10 year old who is telling you that, an eight year old. Simuya 160. Simuya 160. is a privilege. Meaning, get phone. Nikki, I think Kole. That's when I got my first phone when I was in college. And I appreciated that because now, right now, I can buy my any phone that I want to buy. But at that particular moment, our parents taught us to accept the things the way they are. Saizi kama una do, what will you tell your child? You, we need to explain to these uh, children, like, the way we are bringing them up. Cheki, I don't have money. This is not possible. We, you'll get there. When you grow up, you'll buy your own car. We're giving 18-year-olds Mercedes, whatever. We're giving them cars, like, happy birthday. So at the end of the day, it goes back to us, yeah. Because, um, all right. Uh, uh, nothing on the gifts. Hi, <laughs> 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 Mike, what do you think? I mean, it looks like then we are in, um, <coughs> sort of a, a mix here, or, a, or a, I don't know if I can call it a catch to two, where um, they exist, they're there. Mm -hmm. they, there is also the notion, like she said, you know, they're, they're actually people who, despite the changing times, want to punish people just because, meaningless suffer, no, no, yeah, I didn't get it. So therefore, Lazimo, Kwanakasa, no. Right, and then there's also a place where you want the best life for your mm. children. Mm. So how do you how do you balance? And then also on top of that, what has been maybe because I with your experience just watching the Gen Zs, and then right. how do you balance? Yeah. You know, Willis, we are trying to run a digital world with analog blueprints. Mm. It's never going to work. Yeah, if you look at Gen Z in the workplace, for example, what Gen Z have done and why that there's such a hue and cry about Gen Z is because Gen Z have, one, refused to accept the workplace policies and practices that boomers and Gen X were conditioned to believe are the standards, and uh, this is the gospel and the Bible of how the workplace should operate. So Gen Zs have completely refused that. Uh, case in point, for example, my boss needs to see me at 8 o'clock until 5. Whether I'm working or not, whether I'm on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, okay, my boss doesn't care. I have to be at work at 8 to 5. So the boss doesn't understand the concept of, I can actually do this work from home and I will deliver. Um, I'm the kind of person maybe who works better at night than during the day, but I still get uh, the job done. So we're now moving away from time and attendance to delivery of, um, uh, d delivery of uh, KPIs, yeah? Where you're saying, it doesn't matter where you are, but deliver these KPIs, deliver on your KPIs, yeah? So if you are in a workplace that has got boomers, Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z, <laughs> and then soon Generation Alpha is coming, this, it's going to be a big mess. You have to really look at your workplace practices to see how to accommodate everybody and you know the, the, the different levels where they are. The truth of the matter is, in the next couple of years, Gen Z are going to be the, most, the, the majority in the workplace. Right. They're the ones who are going to be running the institutions and the companies. So 
um, there's going to be a conversation there about what the workplace is going to evolve to look like. Yeah. And so another case in point, for example, about the things that Gen Z will not put up with in the workplace is being uh, driven to work in very inhumane conditions. You know, as we were taught, the more you suffer, it means now you are really, you, you, you deserve that. It's called long suffering. Yeah. yeah, I call you at 1 a.m. and I want a report uh, by 6 a.m. I don't care what you are doing, but uh, I need that report by 6 a.m. In fact, that is actually the conversation. Yes. Like, Ukwabi, boss, you know, I, have, yes. I don't care. Yeah. So, so what Gen Z have done very well is to define their boundaries yes. and say, my work, my work time is from 8 to 5. Yeah. If you want to have a conversation about working after five, nearly pay overtime, or you wait until the next day when I will deliver it. So that is, those, are, those are the frictions that we are finding in the workplace, that those two styles of uh, working uh, are clashing, and there's no middle ground to resolve what those should look like. And then Gen Z are the kind of people who are now developing what is called the gig economy. Mm. The gig economy is, I'll come, I'll do something for three hours, I'll shoot whatever I need to shoot. I'll do QT's makeup and I'll go. I'll go to CJ's office. I'll do something for 15 minutes, 20 minutes. He pays me, I go somewhere else. So if you look at the gig economy, it is a multi-billion dollar economy. And Gen Z are the ones who have shikiliad it like this. So they've completely understood it. So we need to look at where is the workplace evolving? Where is it going to? And how can we then begin to understand where our place is in the different age sets that we are and how we can accommodate each other. Otherwise, the frictions continue. All right. The other thing that has happened uh, is now that that is the case, because we also have an influx, the world being a global village. So we still have the very strict um, eight to five models. Uh, then, of course, number one, world global village. Then number two, COVID happened. And then there was like, ah, alas, you can work from home, you can study from home. You can do what you say, like deliver from home. You can do your gigs from the comfort of your machine. Then we also have multinationals that have come into the country. So people working at several places, I wouldn't name. <laughs> um, you know, they find it easy. You go to the workplace, they're chilling on bean bags. They have pool tables. You know, they're easy. So then that interlaced with people who are still on this other side. So how do you, how would an employer who's watching balance working with these uh, Gen Z's? You know, uh, interesting when Mike is talking about uh, the gig economy. Actually, that term was crafted way back in the 60s. Mm -hmm. um, it's not as recent. We, we on this part of the world are uh, catching up with it, but it was crafted way back in the 60s, which means that there have been several generations that have been part of the gig economy. And when you look at, even within the Kenyan context, Workers in the 80s were quite um, inclined towards earning for things like their overtime. The claims would be so much. You know, somebody would know if I work after five, I'm going to lay a claim for my overtime. So I think those are things that have been there a bit more. Uh, just that this, these guys now will talk about that far much more. But there's also the conversation now about returning to the workplace. Uh, in fact, something is building up currently in the U.S. Most of uh, the Fortune 500 companies are trying to dismantle the work from home. And they're talking about rest in peace work from home. They're getting people back to the office <laughs> fully. Uh, and the claim is that when people are working from home, you lose organizational culture. Mm. Uh, so the culture is dying. Uh, people will deliver, but then the culture of the organization is dying. So most of the people are trying to get everybody back to work in the office. There has also been the conversation, uh, and I think an experiment was carried out in the UK probably, about the four day, uh, four day working week. Right. And there are some people who are wondering, what will we do with the fifth day? And um, what will happen on the Friday or something like that? So of course, everything is, uh, we are confronted by disruptions and change. And the whole thing is that leaders and managers need to be very adaptive in nature. Whether we are dealing with the younger generation or the older people, all of us are being confronted by these changes. When COVID happened, didn't matter the age, we all had to learn how to work from home. So those are things that will confront each one of us. The only difference now is to get to know the psychology of the younger people. 
the, the issue is not even the workplace itself, it's the psychology of these people. How do they adapt to change? How do they respond to things that happen? And I think for the younger guys as well, their adaptability is low. Mm -hmm. They're flowing with the trend that is very suitable for them, but are they also adaptable? And that is where now the, the collision will come in, that we will, we will, in our different generations, have to adapt, have to align, embrace uh, these changes that come. But then the Gen Z will come and they will say, this is how we do it. And they will not be willing to adapt to something that is a bit different. So the pressure is put on the older generation. I will expect um, Mike to know how to operate AI right now, you know, chat GPT, I will expect him. These are the guys, this is what they've grown with. Mm -hmm. Now, if you try to bring them into something different from what they've grown with, they will resist it. But then for my age, I will be forced to learn something new. So it's also a very imbalanced expectation where one group always has to make sacrifices <laughs> for the other group. So the conversation should be, how do we then bring both uh, together where each, each group and each generation tries to understand the other generation. Right. Without the foundations that were laid by the previous generations, Gen Z would not be where they are right now. Those inventions, those systems, those structures have been set by other people. There's something that holds the building together. You can repaint it, uh, you can redesign it a bit, um, you can come in here and do interior deco, but when it comes to structural engineering, you're going to have to respect certain rules. So there's the need for them to also understand that when you see a building, you can't just tear up the building and say, I'm going to change the building. Mm -hmm. There are pillars you will leave in place. There are foundations you will leave in place. Then you can play around with the graphics around the building, the paint, the colors, you can move around the furniture, but there are certain fundamental things that should never move. The principles of success will is, are timeless they are timeless. It's still dedication, it's still discipline, it's still determination, it's still the element of sacrifice, it's you going to bed late and getting up early sometimes, it's you putting everything into it. If you're an entrepreneur, the risk factors, the, the things are still the same, very, very. So if we don't teach them that, then the expectations that they have, you know, I'll watch you doing something and making money and I'll think it's easy. I mean, even things like content creation, I hear you saying all the time, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. it, it looks very easy when somebody puts up a reel of 30 seconds, yeah. but the work behind Crazy. that reel is so much. Yeah. So you find that the principles that govern success are still the same. And that is what for me, I feel, needs to be the conversation like. There are fundamental things that no matter what age and stage you are in, you've got to learn this. Then you can change models, you can change designs, you can play around with um, the secondary and the tertiary uh, uh, factors. But then when it comes to the fundamentals, you work with what is time tested. That's the thing, because I mean, what you tell you about, man, first of all, content creation. <laughs> Shout out. Crazy. I was doing something in town the other day. I was in town from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. for 15 seconds of a reel. Eight different locations. Wow. Crazy. Anyway, wow. so Nikazi, and I was walking. Nagari, bear. Anyway, so, um, sing, do you think that this, uh, they said, what we call the, they've been called the microbe generation, instant gratification, akuna delayed gratification as mm -hmm. is the principle. A lot of people uh, today want it now, now, now. Mm -hmm. And yet as CJ said, the principles of success are the same. Do you think that what, what gives the Gen Z that uh, audacity <laughs> 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 to, to demand for that success now? Is it because they've seen us even just a sample of it without the principles that CJ was uh, saying is, are being espoused? Or is it because they assume that, ah, see, Kama Willis, I see crazy Kanana, take another content, not a Mimi, see, you can see him. Where can you get up on a 2020? Yeah. You know, 
uh, kids are good at what they see. It's actually what they see, not what they sometimes hear. It's what the kids see. So whatever it is that they're seeing now, they're exposed to the digital world. But they're seeing finished products. Yes, they're seeing finished products. Awaoni hapa nyuma. Umepea na example na Kenat Semi, for example. Alianza na hizo videos, but do you know how long it took him to actually get there? You know, someone will tell you that I've been uploading videos for like two years. You guys have not been seeing me, but right now. So they think, in their heads, they think, ah, this is easy. I can just pick my phone, record something at home, and get to be seen out there. But as we keep saying, content creation is not easy, Willis. Waking up and putting that camera, knowing how to behave in front of the camera, it's actually work. You just don't wake up and not wash your face and appear <laughs> in front of the camera, you know? It's actually a lot of work, but the Gen Z don't know that. But you see, because times are changing, they are exposed to the digital world. Eh? Right now, th they don't believe in eight to five, sadly. And those are those are the times that are there. And they're, they're most creative. Yani, Gen Z is the most creative. If you give these guys a project, Manzi, they come up with very good things and very creative things. But now the problem is they do not want this to put in the work. They do not want to put in the discipline and all that. They just want to wake up and decide, you know what, I want. And that's why Gen Z gets involved with these so many uh, activities out here. You'll find Gen Z getting into crime because they know if I get into crime, my friends are doing this and this. So they, they'll ask their friends like, hey, so they'll be like crime and all these things. There's so many things, radicalization. Mm -hmm. That's why you'll find this Gen Z, it's so easy for them to actually get into that. And these people get to them through social media. That is something we can't control, Willis. In our days, social media was not that crazy, you know. But right now, everything, even applying for jobs is on social media. You'll just see, uh, we are looking for someone. Those things are there right now. Mm -hmm. Like even on my WhatsApp, I'll just see people like, hey, like they need a creative or they need a graphic designer you'd be like I can actually do that you see like things have totally changed willing so balancing between the two now is where the problem comes in as CJ says it's about the discipline the hard work but if we say like they, we can't expect them to wake up from 8 to 5 because things have changed some of them work during the night shift nowadays the ones that do assignments see those people who do assignments at night then they sleep the whole day so dynamics are changing in our days i mean at a size bado hapa it's 8 to 5 you have to be here like 8 to 5 it's the same thing but for the gen z we also have to let them grow but we also have to make sure that we put in the principles inside them cuz but we have to let them grow cuz if we limit them again I, I don't see how they're going to be creative. You cannot tell a Gen Z, check it, you have to do this. They won't. They're entitled. They work on audacity. You know, like, Gen Z atakwambia zile za wona nisho nini. Una get, like, if the way you've said, like, if my mom cannot talk to me like yeah, that, yeah. who are you to tell me that? My mom tells me that I can get a job. So you just, hey, Willis, I have a daughter who is, can you get an attachment for them and do this and this? In our days, we used to go, round with an envelope, a brown envelope, and you know, drop. you drop physical, physical dropping like, in like, eh, in like 20 it's offices, PFA, PFA eh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, please find a touch. I'm going to make WhatsApp, and I expect, you know, WhatsApp, as they say, in a dependent organization, some put it as official communication, some are like, you cannot WhatsApp me. There are people who log off at nine, or even eight, that person, you'll see them the next day at probably 9 a.m. But with the Gen Z, they're always online. You'll just see them online. You send them something, Asha saw Asha reply. Mm. So we have to get the balance between Gen Z and our generation. Yeah. And we have to let them grow and be creative. As much as we want to bash them, Willis, times are changing. And we have to go with the times, you know. All right. yeah. oh, so the question, by the way, we asked today is, do you think that the Gen Z is too entitled? That's the question of the day. You can uh, SMS us on 22422. And use the hashtag uh, Daybreak. Uh, do you think Gen Z is too entitled? If you're a Gen Z who is watching, <laughs> do you think that y'all are <laughs> too entitled? Uh, the SMS is 22422, and the hashtag to use is Daybreak. Now, uh, Mike, the other thing that organizations go through is yes, while we are talking about them and the audacity and, and ETC, but you find we are still trying to be in spaces where they are. Mm -hmm. So you find organizations these days, you, you, you got to have a digital strategy. You have to be on TikTok. You need to speak their language. So how do you balance that? Because you want to speak their language. Their language is audacity. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> How do you balance? Yeah. You see, um, first even let's interrogate that term audacity. Right. <laughs> see, the thing with Gen Z is that Gen Z understand their value. Mm. And they are not scared to ask to be remunerated for their value. CC, when we got into the workplace, you were told there's no value. You, were, you came in as an intern. Uh, you do everything that needs to be done. By the time, and then you rise through the ranks. Right. Yeah. You rise through the ranks. You wait for 20, 15 to 20 years before you buy your first car. Right. You know, there's a sequence of things that uh, have to happen before you get to that pinnacle of success. Right. Yeah. But Gen Z now are, in a, in, in, are living in a time where people who are their age are making it. So, for example, my son is 12. He's a YouTuber. Yeah. And he looks and he sees there's a kid called Ryan who reviews toys. Ryan is about 10, 11. Ryan, in the last year or so, made $20 million reviewing toys. He's 10. You know, so when you're looking at... Hey, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when, when, when you're looking at what is the standards of success, um, Gen Z are not understanding why you're telling them you have to work for 15 years before you buy your first car. And there's a kid here who is 10 who's making $20 million. Of course, that's, that's the exception rather than the rule. But there are enough examples of people who are their peers who are making it at the age that they are. So it's not um, too far-fetched for them to also expect that they should also be able to climb the ladder as fast as their peers are climbing. Never mind where their peers got the money from, we all know social media is window dressing. Uh, you know, you, you only see the end result. You don't see the process. Even just the algorithm, yes. like for Ryan yes. and your son, yeah. what YouTube will pay Ryan for 10,000 views exactly. in the U.S. is different from it's what different. Ryan will get here. Please, President William, no, no attacks. <laughs> what do I leave with it? So, 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 so what needs to happen? So Gen Z understand their value. Yeah. And they're not afraid to ask for, to be compensated for their value. We were brought up in, in these kind of environments where you could not speak, you couldn't ask. Uh, if you take days off, you are made to feel like you're lazy. So you're there working, 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 just to prove that you're a hard worker, even if you're not doing anything, you know. So then they understand that dynamic. What do Gen Z want, for example, in the workplace? They want to be mentored, they want to be coached. Unfortunately, because now you're dealing with two different uh, ways of thinking in the workplace, uh, boomers and Gen X were brought up military style. You were just thrown in the deep end and you were expected to swim and survive with the sharks in the water. Gen Z want to be coached, they want to be mentored, they want to be shown how to do the work. Unfortunately, us who are brought up in that military style don't understand that coaching and mentoring. It is I throw you work and you do it. If you can't survive, you get out. Yeah. So those are some of the clashes that are happening. But like you said, if you look at, and, 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 and CJ also mentioned, we have to understand the psychology of Gen Z and then understand what it is they want from, the, you see, because it's, 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 a, it's, it's a reciprocatory sort of relationship. What do I give to the institution and what do I get back from the institution as well? It can't be just one way where it's me giving, 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 giving. And a salary is not enough for you to say, but I'm paying you a salary, that's enough. You know, I'm also looking at my career growth. I'm also looking at knowledge and capacity. I'm also looking at, you know, the things that I want to grow into in this field that I'm in. So it's a two-way thing. And so employers have to begin to look at what is also in it for this person who is bringing me this value beyond just giving them a salary. What else can I provide for them? And you'll be surprised. It's, most of the time, it's not even just, it's not just money. There are the things that you could do to motivate somebody to work, to work well. It could be flexi hours. I understand that you work better at night, so work at night and give me what I need. I understand that you need coaching and, and uh, somebody to hold your hand, so I'll give you CJ to walk with you in this journey. You know, it's just understanding those things, so then we begin to see how can we exist uh, in the workplace together. My question is, can we learn something from Jay-Z? From Gen Z, Gen Z. Shout out to Jay Z. Can we learn something from Gen Z? Like, it's, like especially what Mike talked about of knowing value and uh, and speaking. Well, th there's a lot to there's a lot to learn from them um, in terms of how they share information. See, in the older days. Uh, information would be something that is very sacred. So if you have information, QT needs it, you will not give it to her because it probably may threaten your position in the workplace. The Gen Z, they will 
just share it you know so everybody builds each other so they're far much better when it comes to elements of collaboration in the workplace they'll get a lot of work done because they collaborate a lot um, easily share that uh, we would also learn the element of you know input when mike is talking about when somebody brings in value one of the things that i know that gen z does not like is bureaucracy and then they hate hierarchy so they want to go direct to the person who makes the decision. So if I have to pass through Willis, then QT, then get to Mike, they want to go to Mike straight mm -hmm. because they feel these ideas that they have, decisions need to be made <laughs> around those ideas mm -hmm. right now. So we've got to learn from them how to also flatten our bureaucracy. I, I did a book that is not yet out um, on redesigning your business. I talk about that as well. Flatten. flatten the curve, you know, because sometimes we take so much time in decision making uh, processing and then the idea runs out of its time its shelf time so by the time you're approving it it's no longer making any sense so we would learn from them that element of you know things that need to get done now need to get done now and then if I am bringing in the most then why am I a lower grade than Willis, who is doing less, so you reward meritocracy. <laughs> right. So there's that to learn from them. Like they're they're good negotiators of whatever they bring. But I think we would be taking away from the older generation as well when we talk about, you know, uh, some of them would work in the night. You guys must be forgetting that some of your grandfathers and fathers worked the factories in the night. <laughs> they were out there in cotton factories, in flower factories, <laughs> in the night shift, in their aprons and gumboots. And they, they gave their whole life in the night <laughs> over their delivery trucks. Right. <laughs> I think the thing that changes is what we are dealing with. And that's why I say the basic, the basic structure of success is nearly the same. Mm -hmm. So we just are redesigning, repainting the building, uh, shaping it a bit better, rewarding a bit better. And again, some of, the, some of the benefits that Gen Z is getting now is because the generations before fought for them through uh, CBAs, through trade unions, you know, there were a lot of conversations around that, pay people better, do this. So I see, for example, example right now, well, is what an entry level for a teacher would be with the TSC. Um, my mother was a teacher and I look at what teaching offers right now no. and then, but how many strikes did they go on? <laughs> so it's so not- collective just, bargain agreements. Yeah. But I, I don't think I've even been fully <laughs> yeah. Yeah, implemented. Those, those have not even been fully implemented. Some of the things that they were awarded in 1997, some of the people are yet to receive them right now. So when these guys are coming in, they're also coming on the foundation of the sacrifices of the people who have been there before. It's not just because they're also very good negotiators, because if these guys did not challenge the system, <laughs> then you would not even have a boss to talk to and they listen because there would be no laws to protect you um, in the workplace and that. But yes, we can learn from them. We can learn um, flexibility. We can learn collaboration. Um, we can learn intensity. We can learn the value that they bring in, um, the input. We can learn that from them. And then just add now the few other things like, hey, uh, you need discipline. You can earn money. Uh, like the boy that uh, you know, Mike is talking about, Ryan, right. and then you lose it. You lose it because you're not disciplined. Right. So we've got to teach them, <coughs> well, money is just one side of life. Uh, what about the other things? What kind of structure do you have? Will you sustain this? Uh, will you make money for three, four, five years and then lose it? Or will you sustain this and build it as a generational wealth as well? So how are you going to keep this? How will you maintain this? The moment you have a certain level of money, you can't keep it by yourself. You'll have to employ people around you. Do you have structures, systems? Are you emotionally intelligent enough to lead other people as well as they run all this stuff for you? Even if you don't want to, you will have to have an accountant uh, to do stuff for you. So it's just teaching the basics, like life is wholesome. The money is one side, but life is wholesome. There are people who have money and they're depressed with all that money. They don't find the satisfaction. <coughs> and that is not to say that people who have money are depressed. We just say <laughs> that some people have the money and they thought that is all they needed. Then now they're depressed because they've not found the meaning of life. So what then is the meaning of life? These are the things that we've got to instill in Gen Z, the value for other people, respect for other people, uh, touching a life. Why, what would be the benefit of having 
um, my son, if he's 19, for example, and he has all the money, but he doesn't know how to relate with people. He doesn't respect anybody. Um, he will not know how to treat somebody who is lower than him in privilege. He will look down on and um, uh, degrade somebody who is not doing well in life. So what kind of a person will I have raised? So there's still a lot of raising. Anybody can make money, but you've got to raise somebody to become a human being in society, to live with people, to respect, to learn, uh, interrelate with people. Because eventually, whether you have money or you don't have money, you're going to be living in a community and a society. So I think it's just those things. And uh, when Mike is talking about the element of mentorship, um, it's a two-way, Mike. Sometimes I, I see this uh, sometimes that, uh, see what sometimes their idea of mentorship is, is that I brought you this idea, you rubber stamp it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when you say, no, I think you should have done this, uh, they get stressed out. Because again, as I said, some of them don't know how to deal with criticism or rejection. Or if I say, no, go and work on that report again, or go and tweak that your idea, they take it so personally. It's not a critique of the thing that has been done. They feel they have been <laughs> rejected or they have been criticized. They feel it's yeah. them, it's not the them. idea. It's not the idea. <laughs> and you'll just see somebody quit. You'll see somebody quit. Oh, uh, there's a lot of quiet quitting with really? <laughs> Gen Z. <laughs> so they're no, longer, <laughs> <laughs> they're no longer in that project. They are off on WhatsApp. They are off everywhere because, you know, it's just one thing that they wanted did not go their way. So I think for me, the thing is that they've got to learn. Like, you will not always have your way. It's not that we are shutting you down, but you'll not always have your way. And you'll have to learn how to, you know, accept other people's perspective as well. And if you are in a place where everything you do is being celebrated, you will not grow. You will not grow. You have to give room for people to have a different opinion. If I ask you uh, for your opinion about me, I should be willing to hear what you will say, not what I want you to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and in that regard as well, uh, Mike, if you look at it, there's also the other element. She just mentioned it, that money is not everything. But you also hear that the same conversation with Gen Z, they're like, they're not going to leave the organization, like CJ said. Mm -hmm. You might be paying me, uh, well, it's <laughs> 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 an astronomical figure, <laughs> but you might be paying me well. Yes. Um, but you'll hear them leave because, like the tweet mentioned, they feel their the work environment is toxic, mm -hmm. the, I'm not appreciated here. Um, there's no more room for growth, or even as um, simple as CJ said, our sales are attacking ideas. Angu, I've sat for two weeks, come up with this proposal. Amen. Our attacky, ah, bus. Deuces, my people. I'm out. You see, you see, the thing, you see the thing with Gen Z, especially in the workplace. Eh? They value feedback a lot. They really value feedback. So. As somebody who's from an older generation, the way feedback was given to us, you remember like when you were in school and you'd answer, a pay, you'd, 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 you'd start answering an exam sheet or a test, and the teacher wouldn't even bother marking if they saw that, you know, that you, 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 you are, no, no, that you were writing nonsense. Oh, they yeah, just, they yeah. just, <laughs> yeah, you just say, <laughs> and then they give it back See to me. you. Yeah. <laughs> See me in See the me. staff room. <laughs> Finished. That was our feedback, yeah. you know. And then you go to the staff room, first you're caned six of the best, and then now from there, then you start going to ask your desk mates, what's happening? What's happening? Yeah, what you problem? know, so that was the feedback style for- In the for, beginning. Yeah, yeah, for that time. Shout out to Mr. Oke Chawoko. He used to do that with, with composition that he says. And Andika, he crosses and writes drab. That's why I know the meaning of the word drab. Cross you are some drab. Yeah, and that was your feedback. That's feedback. No, that's feedback. But Gen Z, Gen Z, that's not the kind of feedback they are looking for. They're like, okay, you crossed the thing out. Now sit with me and explain to me why, why this idea it hasn't gone the way that. No, no, no you're not even supposed to cross. <laughs> <laughs> just tell me. Crossing is yeah, cross. Exactly. <laughs> yes. yeah, no, the crossing has gone. Yeah, just yeah. sit with me and tell me. Call me, Nita Kamkutano. Tell me, okay, fine. This is the thing. This is where it went wrong. And you see, that's part of coaching. Yeah. And it's part of mentoring as well. Yeah. And that's the feedback process that uh, Gen Z is looking for. In the workplace, though, I think we need to, uh, and I like what CJ said about flattening the structure, you know, so that I don't have to know. So, like, where I work with what, what is called an open door policy. So anyone can walk into the CEO's office and ask anything. But I work in the NGO sector, so that's different. Right. But I, I like something Elon Musk said. Elon Musk said, 
in his company because they're so results oriented and driven. They have no time for hierarchy. For him, the best ideas must win. So whether the ideas came from the person sweeping, whether they came from the highest uh, office in the, in the organization, the best idea must win. And for you to be able to have an uh, organization that's very quickly adaptable and you know, that understands the value of uh, ideas, you need to have a flat structure. And you need to, everybody needs to be valued and feel that they have something that they bring to the table. Then the last thing I think that is really important is everything that we have mentioned here, you can trace it back to parenting. Resilience, discipline, communication, uh, understanding uh, feedback even when it is negative. All those things go back to parenting. Now, most of us, again, were parented in very military styles. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, it was us, way. <laughs> okay, so what do you think? Yeah. All is rhetoric. Yeah. I equate you and attack with you exactly what you think. And, and you see, you couldn't, you couldn't ask, you, 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 if you were given an order, by your parents, you couldn't question it. Yeah, but in the workplace, Gen Z are, told, are given an instruction and they want to question it Why? so they can understand better or they understand this is the best use of my time and my value here. You know, but me who is sitting on the other end is like, until you ask me what? <laughs> <laughs> I told you to do something. You're asking me. <laughs> Please see yourself out through the door and don't let it hit you on the way out. Yes. You know, so, <laughs> so, 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 so those are the things that we need to understand about how the workplace is evolving and who we have in the workplace, how they want to be engaged with, so that we can pull out the best value from them. All right, Nimeski Apo. Ibra Kibra, Shadow Kem, Musiki Kem Kem. Apo, you wrap up the show. Well, I tell you what, I do hope that if you are one, an employer of a Gen Z, uh, if you are Gen Z themselves, or you just want to understand the more that this conversation has helped. And the thing is, we're not bashing and putting them down. We're just saying that, you know, there is room for everybody on both sides to learn and then grow. But I think the take the takeaway is one, it boils down again to the parenting, like QT has also said, yeah, about the enablers. Uh, it goes down to the parenting, let's parent right. I even saw one Israel Robert Borale having a very hot <laughs> reel. Go to his page, Borale One, and check out what he was talking about. <laughs> parents <laughs> quacking. <laughs> but anyway, uh, and I mean, it's, it just goes down to the basics, to the foundation, how we are bringing up this next generation. The owners will definitely fall on us to do more. But even after we've done our part, it now goes to you who's watching, who's the Gen Z. You also have a part to play. You also have to understand that resilience, discipline, consistency, uh, trust, and belief, or honesty, those basic principles of success still exist. So do that, and uh, hopefully uh, everybody will be okay. Because we'll make up and say, kuna generation alpha sasa na kam. Your time might be up. <laughs> Watch out. All right, peace and love. Leo ni Tuesday, so kesho bado tunaongelea ma mambo sa majambos. Thursday to pick it. Friday tutakuwa na rich spice for the day break. All right? So we'll see you then. Mungu abariki sana. Shout out to Sian Mwangi watching from Nakuru. Big low. <laughs>